Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled Geolocating an oil refinery in Ukraine using NASA Fire Map. Introduction. A few days ago I came across a video on Twitter that at first seemed fairly easy to geolocate. The tweet mentioned the name of the city where the incident was happening and the type of infrastructure affected. The footage had a decent view of the surrounding area, so everything was pointing towards a less than 5 minute geolocation. However, this was one of those instances in which my assumption was wrong. It had happened before when thinking that some photo or video might take too long or even impossible for me to geolocate, and then turns out I solved it in a few minutes, such as the one I did on the pro-Russian Chechens in Mariupol last month. This time it was the other way around. I immediately assumed, since I was given so much data to start with, that I would just hop in Google Maps and immediately find the area. I did find the correct coordinates eventually, but for that I had to use an extra piece of information I don't often get to use, NASA Fire Information for Resource Management System, or FIRMS for short. So let's see how we can use this useful and free tool to our own advantage. The video. The video we are about to geolocate was found on Twitter and depicts a fuel depot on fire today in Kremenchuk after Russian strike. So there's already a lot of information we can gather from this. We know that this will be a big fire, probably visible from quite a distance, since fuel is extremely flammable. We also know that this is located in a place called Kremenchuk in Ukraine and that it was happening on the 2nd of April 2022, the day that tweet was published. Feel free to watch the video below. If Twitter goes down, there's a screenshot of the archived tweet and a link to the video, but we still have it here, so let's play it. So what do we see? We see some structures, some sort of pipes, as a fire, obviously the massive fire. There's two rows of trees, it seems. There's a lot of grass, there's a path. So we're walking on a path and you can see some silos there in the back, but they're not on fire, which is pretty good. There's some stairs here leading to the fire ones. And then there's some holes. That's probably not very useful for us because it won't be on satellite view anyway. <laughs> and then as we think, oh, this is almost finishing, there's a path. So there's a path to the right as well. So this path goes front and turns to the right. And that's it, that's our video. This is all we get. So, after watching the video, we can already notice a few landmarks and features that will make it easier, <laughs> you think, to identify the exact location. The footage starts by showing some sort of white structure that starts above our head and then goes down to our left, ending in a much lower height. So, this was the first pipe that we saw here, this one there. The person filming is walking on a paved pathway and there are two rows of trees on the left separating them and the silos on fire. At the 15 second mark we can see on the left some small set of stairs leading up to the silo area. Then towards the end we see a connecting path on our right with a sign on the grass. There are also more silos ahead at the end of the path. Geolocating. At this point, we already have enough information to start looking at Google Maps and navigate around Kremenchuk in order to find this industrial oil facility. If you just search for this one, so this is Kremenchuk in Ukrainian, this is what you'll see. So Google is just like, this is Kremenchuk for you. You're welcome. It's a fairly big industrial city in central Ukraine, but it doesn't take much to spot the big fuel depot at the north of the town. So this is the section there. Some of the silos have such an enormous size that they can be seen from quite high up. You can actually see several of them there, right? To make it easier to see without having to turn my head a lot, I switched to Google Earth Pro, which enabled me to rotate the camera in any direction. I aligned the oil refinery map in front of me, and these are all the silos that we can spot at first glance. There's a lot. So finding out which one was on fire, it was a bit tricky. This is what I meant when I said that at first it looks like it will be super easy and fast. We went straight to Kremenchuk and immediately spotted the industrial area with the silos, but when you start looking into it, there's just so many places it could be that checking them all one by one in search of our specific landmarks and features would take a very long time. Uh, we don't have that amount of time as data from Ukraine keeps coming at an alarming rate. 
Geolocations like this need to be done swiftly and precisely so we can move on to the next one. NASA Firms. This is where NASA's Fire Information for Research Management System tool comes in handy. This free OSINT tool is perfect to locate fires and hotspots around the globe. It provides both data in real time, which is perfect for ongoing fires, and historical information for when we need to verify what happened in a certain area within a specific time range. NASA Firms is also a fairly simple to use tool. When entering the website, you'll see on the left the location tool, so this is the one. After selecting it, we'll choose the Find Location there in the middle option and write Kremenchuk. The list will provide a few options and we can simply select the first one as after a quick Google check, we can confirm that Kremenchuk is indeed located in Poltava Oblast region in Ukraine. The image will at first be quite zoomed out and might not even look like the correct place, but if you keep on zooming in, you'll soon recognize the area. So here it is, our oil depot in Kremenchuk. What we need to do now is to select a few options on the right, there you go, in order to get some visual information. As we are now looking at the incident in the past, we'll need to choose the historical tab, this one there, and input the correct date. We're quite lucky that we know exactly when this fire happened, as it says in the tweet, so we can just select the 2nd of April. The results are immediately visible on the map. So I will actually show you how it is done in practice. So we have our map. This is what we get when you go to NASA firms. So you click the locator and you find the location. So we're going to choose now Kremen Chuck. There you go. I don't even fish. Is it that one? Yeah. So you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. You're like okay. And if you go to the north, because we know it's the north, there we go. We can already see the silos there, which is what we're looking for. Then we go here and we need a historical view because we need to put that it was in April 2nd. And then we just need to zoom out a bit because it was covered and look at that. Here's what we are looking at. We have this section where the silos and this section where there are silos. Let's put it back again. If you are a bit curious, you can select different settings to see what they do. Most options will have the I symbol, meaning you can click on it and read more information about each type of imagery provided and their provenience. As an example, if you go to the advanced mode, you'll see that by default, all four types of satellite images are available. So you can see them all available, all these options. You have two VII RS, which stand for Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite, located in both the satellites SWOMI and BP and NOAA-20, and the MODIS, which stands for, so this is the MODIS one, this two, stands for Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectral Radiometer, located above the Terra and Aqua satellites. So you have Aqua there, Terra there. All these instruments are used to collect data on active fires and thermal anomalies. In this case, we can see how the satellite that picked up the data of the fires in Kremenchuk on April 2nd was Terra. Thank you, Terra. So this is the image I just show you. Same. For some reason, this is red. Just that's fine. Just go with it. Now that we have a few specific hotspots, we can compare it with the location of the silos in a previous map and narrow down our search by a lot. Below are the only two areas which contain silos and have also been marked as having big thermal changes on the 2nd of April. Now we just need to zoom in and look around. From looking at the image above, there was a 50% chance of picking the correct section out of the two highlighted ones and I was lucky enough to go straight for the winning spot, which is the bottom one. So this is it. This is where it is. Now that we are here, we need to find the exact fuel silos that were on fire in the footage. The more precise geolocation you can do, the better. At a quick glance, you might already be able to see the winning spot. Not if I scroll fast. <laughs> Verification. As always, identifying the location is not enough. You need to prove it with clear evidence. So let's get to it. For this part, I switched to Google Earth Pro. Again, love it as it has the great feature of rotating the camera around. It's much easier to compare it with the footage if both images are facing the same way. 
below, you can see the interesting features that caught my attention. On number one spot here at the bottom, we can observe what looks like that strange white metal frame that comes from above where the person starts filming. So you can see there, 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 there. perfect. On two, you can see the long row of trees and above it, the stairs leading up to the silo. So this is where the stairs were. On three, there's a connecting path on our right. Look at that, see, remember when he went to the right suddenly? And on four, we can see another set of silos in the distance, straight ahead. We can now attempt to match them all with the frames from the footage. Starting from the top, in dark pink, we can see the silos at the end of the path. So you can see the silos, and this is what we're watching in the video. Here they are. On the right, in purple, here, we can see where a new pathway connects towards the right hand of the screen. Remember, right at the end of our video, there was a path to the right, and this is it. It's here. Below that one in orange, this one here, you can spot the area where the stairs leading up to the silos can be seen. So you can see the stairs there, and this is the stairs as well. At the bottom, we can observe that white metal structure that goes above and across the pathway. So here, it's located there. And finally, in bright green, we can see the long line of trees between the silos and the pathway. So which one was on fire? From looking at the footage, we know that the affected silos were the first two on our left. So we can confidently pinpoint our coordinates to that area. And here it is, the end result at the Center for Information Resiliences Russian-Ukraine monitor map at Map Hub with the final coordinates. And this is the coordinates. The map has been moved and updated in December 2022. And here's the new location. So it's on eyesonrussia.org and I can show you where it is. So it's already selected. There was a few things in Kremlinchok. Remember that it was at the north. So likely that one. There we go. It's the silos on fire. If you scroll down a bit more, you'll see the coordinates that I've entered. And credits are, because that's where I work. And there it is. If you unselect this option, you see everything that's been happening in Ukraine since the invasion. It's scary. Conclusion. Although for most of the time you don't need anything else other than Google Maps to geolocate photos or videos coming from Ukraine, occasionally specific open source tools such as the NASA firms are actually quite useful to speed up the process. Would we be able to get to the correct spot without it? Absolutely. Would it have taken way longer? Definitely. In situations where there's so much data that you want, you need to go through it at a fast pace. Learning what tools are available is very important. Even if you don't get to use them on a regular basis, just knowing that they exist and how to operate them is enough to cut down the time spent geolocating or analyzing something. Thank you for listening and hopefully you learned something new and useful today. Take care. Sophia.